In the last installment of C++ in under 5 minutes, we took a quick look at some conditional statements. In this installment, we are going to be looking at nested conditional statements. So you can take a conditional statement like an if-else statement and stick it inside another conditional statement. So as you can see, I've already gotten started. We have a variable right here called the number. This variable is an integer initialized to zero. We have a message that is going to be printed to a console for the user. So it's going to print out, please enter a number. Number. And then, of course, we're going to use CN and the extraction operator to grab the number from the user. And if I run this in the terminal, uh, you can see that I have this set up already. So if I just enter five, nothing's going to happen. Uh, that's all that we have so far. There's no logic behind this yet. So next, I'm going to create an if-else statement. You guys already know how to do this if you watched the last episode. So if, uh, oops, I have caps lock on. So if, let's try this again. There we go. If the number is greater than zero, we are going to print out a message. So we'll just open up these brackets and see out the, oops, the number is greater than zero. And for our else statement, I'm just gonna set that equal to null for now. We're not gonna uh, do anything with that for this episode at least. And of course I need an end L right here to skip down to the next line. So end L and then for else statement, once again, else is just going to really do nothing right now. So we're gonna drop a null in there, null. So we have our basic if else statement. There's nothing nested within here just yet. So if I build it and run it and enter a number that is greater than zero, it should print out that message. So I'll just drop a one in here. And there we go. The number is greater than zero. That's exactly what we wanted. So now what I can do is I can take another if statement and shove it inside this if statement. So if is greater than one. We are going to print out another message. You guys can probably already guess what that message is going to be. So we're gonna drop a C out right here. C out. The number is greater than one. And we can keep on doing this. We can just keep on putting if statements inside of our if statements. So if I, if I do this again, I can drop another if statement right here. If the number is uh, greater than two this time, we're going to print out another message. Once again, this is really repetitive. You guys already know what the message is going to be. The number is greater than so now we have two if statements nested inside our initial if statement. Now you don't necessarily have to have else statements to go along with these. Actually, if I got rid of this else right here, nothing would happen. Uh, we could just have an if statement since I'm not doing anything with that. And if I, you know, compile and build this, I'm not going to get any errors. Um, but let's see what happens when we try to run this. So I'm going to build and run it right now. And if I just enter one, you will see that it only prints out this message right here. Why isn't it printing these out as well? Well, easy answer to that. So right here, it's evaluating the number. It's uh, checking the condition. And here, since the number is one, when we entered in one, it evaluates to true. So it prints this message down here. The number is greater than zero. But when it goes down to this if statement, it checks it again it evaluates to false because the number that we entered is one and one is not greater than one. So therefore it doesn't execute any of the code within this if statement because the condition evaluated to false and therefore none of this gets executed. Now, if I go back up here and run it again, we can get all of the code within these if statements to execute by entering a number that is greater than two. So if I enter a number that is greater than two and enter three, you will see that it prints all three messages. And yes, everything is valid in here. Three is greater than zero, three is greater than one, three is greater than two. And the reason it prints all these messages out is because it checks the first condition. This first condition right here evaluates to true because three is greater than zero. This condition right here evaluates to true because three is greater than one. And this condition right here evaluates to true because once again, this is super repetitive, uh, but three is greater than two and therefore it prints 
all of these messages. If you're really set on wrapping your head around C++, then I would highly recommend having a written resource laying around. And this is a great book. This is C++ Premiere Plus by Stephen Prada. I bought this last week, read through it, and I love this book. I had to use a uh, different C++ book for college during my uh, C++ courses there. And this blows that book out of the water. It's much easier to read. I love the way this is laid out. And it has everything, pretty much everything that you need to know about C++ in here. Tons of examples. And if you want to check this out, I will put the link to it down in the description. It's also very affordable, um, especially compared to most college textbooks. This was 30 bucks off Amazon. I couldn't even rent my C++ book that I had for college for 30 bucks. That thing cost at least 60 bucks to rent. So um, a real bargain. Tons of content in here, good content, well written, lots of examples. And if you want to check this out, once again, link will be down in the description. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment down in the comment section. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. If you didn't like this video, please tell me why. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.